good morning, my sisters and brothers in Christ. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Once again, the Lord has allowed us to see a new day and to share in this Sunday school hour. Today's topic is the Lord has risen indeed. Our scripture text is Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 21 and verses 28 through 35. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, once again, we come before you with bowed heads and humble hearts to say thank you. Thank you for your steadfast love and unending mercy. Every day you are faithful and every day we fall short. Lord, please forgive us. As we enter into this period of study, please let us close out the rest of the world and let us focus on you and all that you have for us today. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. My sisters and brothers in Christ, today's topic is the most important event in the life of a Christian. It's more important than your birthday, your graduation day, your wedding anniversary, and the birth of your children. What Jesus accomplished more than 2,000 years ago is the most special day in the Christian's life. Because Jesus rose from the dead, we have hope. Because he lives, we can live also. All four Gospels record the story of Jesus' resurrection. All four Gospels also focus on various aspects of the resurrection and different post-resurrection appearances by Jesus. In our text today, Luke records the story of a special post-resurrection appearance of Jesus to two of his followers. Let's examine the first uh, Easter. The women were the first to learn about the resurrection. They went to the tomb without hope, resigned to his death. The horror of Good Friday was over. They went mourning to complete the customary preparation of Jesus' body for burial. They went with no faith that anything would change. Upon reaching the tomb with no faith and no expectations, the women were met by two angels. The text tells us in Luke chapter 24, verses 5 and 6, And as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was in Galilee, that he would be delivered into the hands of sinful men. And on the third day he would be raised from the dead. Hearing this, the women ran to tell the apostles, but these faithful and reliable witnesses were not believed. The apostles, those that spent three years with Jesus, those that had trusted their lives to him, simply dismissed the witness of the women as idle tales. In this account, only Peter went out to see if the story was true. Luke tells us that Peter arose and ran to the tomb, and stooping down, he saw the linen clothes lying by themselves, and he departed, marveling to himself at what had happened. Today's lesson is a special story that presents the reality of men's hearts on that first Easter Sunday. Luke possibly got his information from Cleopas, who was one of the two men mentioned in the story. It is a story that gives us hope. Let's get into our text. Luke chapter 24, uh, verses 13 through 21. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they were, while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were holden that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priest and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death, and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Here we have two of Jesus' followers walking to the village of Emmaus, which was about seven miles from Jerusalem. It's possible that these men were returning, that they were returning home after the Passover had ended. They were not part of the 12 that Jesus called. One was named Cleopas, as um, mentioned in verse 18, and the other unnamed. They heard about the resurrection story from the women, but they didn't really believe it. While they walked, they talked about all these things which had happened. 
they had hoped for a Messiah that would come and deliver them from Roman oppression and fulfill the prophecies of a coming king. In their minds, something had gone terribly wrong, and now the king was dead, and it appeared to have all fallen apart. These disillusioned followers desperately wanted to know why their expectations of the Messiah had come to such a tragic end. Luke describes the two returning to Emmaus as being engaged in heavy conversation and not immediately aware that someone was now walking with them. Here you have two confused and discouraged individuals traveling back home and Jesus himself drew near and started walking with them. Sometimes we feel discouraged and alone. Sometimes we don't understand or believe although the truth is staring us in the face. In those times, in those times, Jesus draws near and lets us know that he cares. When Jesus began to walk with them, they were not overwhelmed by some spectacular physical appearance. It appears on this occasion to be that Jesus was in normal human form. Luke tells us that their eyes were holding that they should not know him. In other words, they were prevented from recognizing him. If you remember in John chapter 20, verse 15, Mary Magdalene thought Jesus was the gardener. No one knew who Jesus was until he revealed himself to them. Now, this occurred when Jesus was physically on earth, but it's the same way in the spiritual sense. Look at Luke chapter 10, verse uh, 22, and this is from the New Living Translation. My Father has entrusted everything to me. No one truly knows the Son except the Father, and no one truly knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. We don't recognize Jesus until he reveals himself through his word and through the work of the Holy Spirit. Continuing in verses 17 and 18, as Jesus walked with them, he asked a question designed to engage them in conversation. What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? No doubt their confusion and lack of understanding was shown on their faces, and certainly it was heard in the tone of their conversation. Of course, Jesus knew what was going on. Uh, Cleopas said to Jesus, and this is from the New Living Translation, you must be the only person in Jerusalem who hasn't heard about all the things that have happened there the last few days. It was hard for Cleopas to imagine anyone not knowing about the crucifixion and death of Jesus. However, as the story continues, we discover that they had a faulty perspective of Jesus, his earthly mission, and the resurrection. Verses 19 and 20. And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people and how the chief priest and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. Now, Jesus knew why um, <clears throat> they were sad and the reason, but his questions got them, got, uh, them to open up, and their answers revealed what they believed about Jesus. First, their perspective lacked spiritual understanding. Cleopas clarified their concept of who Jesus of Nazareth was and where he came from. They recognized Jesus as a mighty prophet, a man sent from God. Jesus had been perceived by most of the people to be one sent from God, their hope for the future. Everything Jesus did was widely known. He preached God's message and the miracles performed proved he was sent from God, but they didn't understand that he was the son of God. He was God in the flesh, all God and all man. Then Cleophas spoke of how the religious leaders delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified. Continuing in verse 1, 21, But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Second, they misunderstood the messianic role of Jesus. Their expectation was that the Messiah would deliver them from Roman oppression. Many disciples made the mistake of thinking that the Messiah would, would merely recapture the glory days of King David. In other words, they hoped Jesus would bring Israel the same power and prosperity she once enjoyed. What they didn't understand was that Jesus did not come to redeem Israel politically, but to redeem mankind from the bondage of sin. Jesus was to be greater than any other earthly king. He is the king of kings. 
and the Lord of Lords. Third, they failed to acknowledge the resurrection. Verses 22 through 27 are not part of our text, but in those verses, Cleophas says, Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were went early, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them, which were with us, went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. If these two disciples had believed that Jesus was alive, they would have responded differently. They didn't believe it. First, they would not have been walking away from Jerusalem, but they would have stayed in Jerusalem to see the risen Lord. Second, they would have seen the trials, crucifixion, and burial of Jesus as the fulfillment of all he promised, not as the end of their hopes. From their perspective, it was all over. Finally, in verses 25 and 26, Jesus rebuked them and followed up with a question. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Their response to these events demonstrated that they knew the prophecy concerning the Messiah, but they didn't accept it as truth. They didn't believe it. Verse 27 says, And beginning from Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them the things concerning himself and all the scriptures. And the scripture became alive to them like never before. Verses 28 and 29. And they drew nigh unto the village, whither they went. And he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. As it was the custom of hospitality during that time, the two invited the stranger to stay the night. Scripture says he made as though he would go further. Jesus would not force himself up on them. He waited for their invitation to come in. God gave man the greatest and the most dangerous gift in the world, the gift of free will. We can use it to invite Christ into our lives or allow him to pass on. But they constrained him. That is, they urged Jesus to stay the night with them. A careful review of the scriptures gave them a divine perspective on what they once saw as dismal circumstances. The Christian's hope is based on our faith in who God is and his word. The promises of God inspire hope. It gives us the ability to look at a situation and know that regardless of how it may appear, God is going to come through. Verses 30 and 31. And it came to pass, as he said at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. And their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. Once they said to eat, Jesus broke the bread and blessed it. Their eyes were opened. What happened here was divine revelation to two individuals that were ready to believe. Their eyes were suddenly able to see everything clearly for the first time. Luke tells us their eyes were opened and they knew him. The word opened means they fully comprehended him. They recognized Jesus as the Messiah, the suffering servant, the Son of God, and the risen Lord. And then he vanished out of their sight. Jesus was there and then gone. Verses 32 and 30, uh, 35. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in the breaking of bread. After Jesus revealed himself to them, they understood why their hearts burned within them as they traveled on the road. What is this burning? It is the pure joy and hope that comes from knowing the truth of Scripture concerning Jesus Christ. They knew something was different, but they couldn't understand the emotions and excitement they felt. Not until he talked with them and not until he opened to us the Scriptures. It is not information that creates hope. It is revelation. The hope of Easter is Jesus Christ is alive forevermore. The two men quickly turned around and headed back to Jerusalem to find the eleven who were with others, who were with other followers. They didn't even wait until the morning. They were eager to tell what had happened to them that day. But when they arrived, the eleven disciples and those that were with them said, The Lord is risen indeed. 
and hath appeared to Simon. That means that Jesus made one of his first appearances to Peter, the man who denied him three times. In doing so, Jesus gave Peter his self-respect back. Cleopas and the other disciple then shared their experience on the Emmaus Road and how he made known to them in the breaking of bread. Before Easter Sunday morning, the followers of Jesus could only remember the trial, crucifixion, the burial, their denials, and their personal struggles. Jesus' teachings and instructions seemed hard to understand. The eleven disciples and others had gathered behind closed doors because they were afraid they were next. Their hope was almost gone. But in the midst of turmoil and uncertainty, Jesus came and showed himself to them. Verse 36 says, And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, Unto them, peace be unto you. Jesus brings hope to the hopeless and renewed courage. Maybe you are hiding somewhere in your Jerusalem today behind closed doors or walking a lonely road away from everything you once believed because you're disappointed and you don't understand. Don't give up on Jesus. Jesus faced, fought, and conquered death. He is alive. He will walk with you and talk with you and reveal himself to you. He is alive, and because he is alive, there is hope. We will continue this lesson on next week. Until next time, may God bless and keep you. If you enjoy this program, call us right now, 404-688-6680, or send an email to info at mountpleasantatl.org. Mount Pleasant Baptist Church is a congregation full of life and love for everybody. Would you consider sowing an offering? Whatever God lays on your heart to give would be a blessing to the ministry. Thank you for your support. Mount Pleasant Baptist Church, Atlanta, Georgia.